So welcome back for another round of tips and tricks that you can hopefully implement in your coffee break, all to do with the Power Platform and Microsoft 365. Don't forget, if you like this tip that I'm going to share with you in the next 10 minutes, then please do like and subscribe. I'll be sharing more over the coming weeks. Today, what I'm going to show you is how to solve the problem of getting document approvals from your team in the simplest way possible. But not just that, I'm going to help you solve the problem of approvals that need to go through different people in a specific order, what we call sequential approvals. So there's three great ways that you can really quickly get approvals for a new document artifact that's landed. The first and probably the quickest is you can now use some features in SharePoint out of the box. This is a list that I've got here. The list's gonna have a document location. And when I add a new item to this list, I might paste the link in there. But what you can do now is if you go to the automate option in SharePoint, you can have approvals set up on the list itself. If you click this on, as it suggests there, what will happen is you'll get the option when you add a new item to set up who's going to approve this item and I'll show you how that works. So I've just set it up there. It's given you a new column which will instantly track what's happening with the approval and to actually request approval for an item you'll select on it and you will go to request approval. Now uh, this is what I'm going to call the approval here. I will then select who I want the approvers to be. It's just a standard people picker. We'll put Fraser and myself in. I'm going to require a response from all approvers. If I turn that off, either myself or Fraser could approve this. So in this case, I'd require it from all approvers. Put the details in, click Submit. That'll just go off and do its thing. Let's just click Submit. And over in Teams, what's happening now is I'm going to get a notification which will ask me and Fraser's exactly the same. You'll get a notification to ask him to approve this particular action. So all that's happening now without me doing anything. That's an end user example of approvals. You can see there the request has been updated and I've just received a request. So I'll click over my Teams and there we go. You didn't see that but I clicked it in Teams, I approved it. I can have a look to see what's happening. Uh, I can see there that because I put both of us should approve it, Fraser's still pending a response, I've approved it, it's all good. I'll just cancel that request. So there's a bit of end user control there, quite nice. My guess is that'll be useful for people who've got permissions on a particular list and want to be the drivers for document approvals. But what if you want to set something up for your team to use? You might then need to reach into Power Automate and actually set up a background process that could be triggered from a list irrespective of what the permissions on that list might be. Because as you've seen there, this very much relies upon me being able to click these buttons, configure approvals, do all that end user type behaviours within the list itself. So imagine I've got a read-only list here and I'm just going to add a document into that list as, as a perhaps a contributor to that SharePoint list. What do I do then? Well, historically, I've had a really great option in Power Automate that I'll show you. So if I pop over here, I'll just turn this Power Automate flow on and I will show you what it looks like. You can do various different kinds of approvals and what will happen is those approvals can wake up depending on something happening in a SharePoint list. You'll be very familiar with this action here when an item's created. So I've pointed it to a site. This is my list names, the approvals workflow. I've just pointed it at that list. Now, interesting to note, this is introduced recently. You've now got the option to change the frequency on which something is checked in that list. So for my case, I might want to check it every single day to see if something new has happened. So historically, what I might have done is I might have waited for a new item to be added and then gone through a process of start and wait for an approval. Now, you'll always recognize these if you've ever worked with approvals before. You can have it so everyone, in, in the case of how I'd set this up, maybe Fraser and myself must approve. It could be either Fraser or myself approve, but whoever responds first gets the answer on that approval. It could be we're going to wait for all responses and do something different or just wait for one response. But this new option here, I'll come on to in a minute. But in the historical case where I might have wanted perhaps a number of people in sequence, maybe it's my team leader, then my department's leader, then maybe the financial budget owner to approve something, I might have done a flow a bit like this. So I would have, um, for example, the first to respond. Uh, you're the first approval, please decide and I'll pass it to the next. You put the email in, which is actually from that SharePoint list, just to show you where that came from, when an item's created. We've got all this information here. Because it's a people column in SharePoint, we've got all these lovely pieces of information about that person from the person object. So I just choose their email. I then might put a link to the item. So that's how I'd configure that. 
I then might have this first approval gate, which is a condition. So just to reinforce what a condition looks like, in case you've never seen one before, this is a condition. It's under the control group. You select it, and when you select it, you get the chance to watch something take place and depending on an outcome, do something. So here, depending on the outcome of the first start and wait for an approval, which is here, if that's approved, do the true leg. If it's false, do the false thing. And that might be send someone an email. So the beauty of this is you've got really good control at a granular level for each step. So start and wait for an approval for, let's say, Fraser. Fraser says, yes, great. Start and wait for an approval from the second approver, which in this case is John. Again, I've pulled that dynamically from the particular list that I'd set up. So just to remind you, I actually hard baked that into the list here. So start and wait for an approver. If that second person does the thing, great. If not, do that thing. I've got two chances there to configure the true and the false actions, which is great. You've got granular control, but what you also have as a slight trade-off is this cascading effect of potentially quite complicated sequential approvals. Now in the future, when you come back to this, maybe you wanna think about simplifying, and that is where this new action comes in. So let's just click back here. I won't save anything. So back to my flows. I've turned this one off because I don't want it running uh, again. That'll cause me a headache. And I'll turn this one on, the new sequential approvals. Now let's have a look at how simple this setup is. So again, exactly the same setup. We're going to a SharePoint list. Again, I'm just going to put the list in there so you can see me do that. Then we're going to start and wait for an approval. And I've selected this fifth one here, sequential approval. And what actually happens is this approval flow will manage behind the scenes going from person one then to person two and it's managing it via this json structure here so this is what the code looks like behind the scenes now when you first set this up i'll just show you it doesn't look quite like that it's just good that you're seeing that as one i baked earlier so if i go start for wait for approval now the way that you will see it when you set it up is i'll click a sequential approval and you'll already notice the difference. I've got approval steps. So first step, who do I want to send it to? Well, okay, I'm gonna send it to my first approver email. Great. Second step, and this is important, add new item. Then you click the second person's email. So second person's email. Don't chain them together because that will effectively create a group of people that will get the first step. And that's how you set it up. You can put details in there. You might enable notifications, etc. But let's just delete this and let you see the rest of the flow. So as I say, this is what I've made earlier. It looks slightly different, but it's the same process to create that. Then we've just got one condition. What's the outcome? of that start and wait for an approval. There's only one. If it's equal to approve, then do the thing. If it's equal to false, do some other things. The difference here is you have one overall true false test. So if anybody in your group of sequential actions rejects, it will go down this leg, whether it's the first, the second, the third, the 15th, doesn't matter. If everybody in that group says yes, it goes to this leg. So all that's really happening is instead of sending an approval to everyone at once, it will send it in order from one to two to three to four, however many you set up there. So that's just an example there of how you could do three different ways of your approval. And I hope that one of those resonates with your team. Um, but we do now have a lot more flexibility in approval actions. So I hope you enjoyed what I had to share with you there. Please do remember to like and subscribe and keep coming back for more tips in the future. I'll see you next time for some Coffee Time Turbo Tips.